Hello gents, welcome to section six on polymers, natural and synthetic types. So a polymer is a substance that is a macromolecule consisting of many similar small molecules called monomers. They're covalently bonded together in very long chains. Macro just means big, so molecules that are really big, they're big because they're made out of smaller molecules called monomers. Monomers is just a very general term for small molecules that stack together to make long chains called polymers. So monomer plus monomer plus monomer will eventually get you to a polymer. Now these are made polymers through a process called polymerization. It's a chemical reaction that converts small molecules, monomers, into large molecules, polymers. Now there are a few important polymers that we encounter every single day and they're essential for life. One is DNA. That's right, your DNA. It stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. It's, a, its monomer for DNA is nucleotides. That's the nucleic part in DNA. The N stands for the nucleotide. So a bunch of nucleotides stacked together with you know, a few other things to create DNA, a long double helix chain, essentially. Proteins are also polymers, excuse me. The monomers for proteins are called amino acids. Sugars, starches, and carbohydrates are also polymers. The monomers for those are glucose. We've all seen glucose before. Now we encountered <coughs> polymers today in our laboratory. In your investigation, you took polyvinyl alcohol and borax, mixed them together, and you created some slime. Now this slime can be defined as a non-Newtonian fluid. What this means is that the slime does not flow according to Newton's descriptions of liquids and solids. This slime has something, a property we call viscosity. Viscosity is a property related to the resistance of a liquid to flow. So if you were to take that slime in, in your beaker and turn it upside down, it wouldn't flow out like water. It resists the urge to flow. It doesn't really have an urge, it's slime. But it resists the flowing due to gravity. So that is viscosity, the measure of which, the measure to which something resists to flow. So as you looked at this slime, you saw that it was not quite a liquid, but it wasn't quite a solid. It kind of had properties of both. Let's talk about that. So it is fluid. It takes the shape of its container. If you left that slime in your beaker, it would level out and take the shape of the beaker. If you put it in the graduate cylinder, it would be the same thing, just as a liquid would. But when you took it and you balled it up and you bounced it on the ground, it literally took a hop. It bounced. And it broke apart. Those are properties of a solid. So when a substance has properties of liquid and a solid, we call it a non-Newtonian fluid. Slime falls in that category. Now let's talk about the science behind this actual experiment. We had two substances. We had PVA, which stands for polyvinyl alcohol, and we had borax. We put those together to make slime. Let's talk about what PVA and borax actually are on the, the chemical scale here. So this is PVA. Actually, this is only part of it. The P in PVA stands for poly. Poly means many. Many vinyl. It is vinyl alcohol group. So this is one vinyl alcohol group. If I take many of these and stack them together, meaning another one of these on this end, another one of these on this end, I'll get PVA. Many vinyl alcohol groups. It's a long chain. So PVA is a big long chain. This reacted with borax. This is borax. Boron here with OH, 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 OH. Put these together, they make slime. Let's talk about how that actually happens. So if we look over here, when in your beaker of PVA, you had long chains like this. Notice this alcohol group here. It's the same thing I have over here. I just have many of them. I have one, two, three, and the chain goes on for, you know, millions and millions of you know, these different sets together. So this is a long chain of PVA. So when I mix my borax and my PVA together, 
this is what's going to happen. I have a PVA chain here and a PVA chain there. What they're going to do is they're going to lock this borax into place. The borax acts as like the glue between these two PVA chains. In the beaker, when you guys observe PVA, those molecules are just sliding behind, beside each other. You know, there's like these chains, it's just sliding past each other, you know, with nothing to restrict them. But when you introduce borax to the mixture, borax has these sites on them, these OH sites here. These areas are attracted to the, this oxygen here is attracted to the hydrogen here. Oxygen attracted to that hydrogen there. So there's attraction between this OH group here on the borax and the OH group here on the PVA chain. That attraction creates something called a crosslink. So where you had two separate chains, now you have a molecule here in the middle bringing them together. It connects them. It's like, think of, you know, the two poles of a ladder or slabs of wood for a ladder, the, the rungs in between, the steps in between, this is like this connecting step for the two different um, slabs of wood for the ladder. So this borax holds these two chains together through this connection here. We've heard of this connection before. This connection is called a hydrogen bond. We have hydrogen bonds here, 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 here. So we have cross-linking, linking this Poly, linking this polymer and this polymer through hydrogen bonds. So these two PVA chains, the PVA is the polymer. These two PVA chains are linked together by borax through hydrogen bonds, which we call cross-linking. Now cross-linking is very important. It determines how, how strong something is or how delicate it is or its function. So, for this situation, cross-linking is weak, thus giving the slime its ability to flow and be pulled apart. This cross-link is pretty weak, that's why the slime is flexible. But an example of a strong cross-link, so strong polymers cross-links form, well strong polymer cross-links, excuse me, form strong polymers. For example, Kevlar. Kevlar is a polymer and Kevlar is a material that makes up bulletproof vests. Teflon is also a polymer. Teflon made up, you know, bulletproof vests in the past, and it also makes up the black coating you see on uh, pots and pans. That's Teflon. Gentlemen, take notes on some of this stuff, please, and come to class prepared. Adios.